The UK government has introduced measures to allow driverless cars onto UK roads by 2015. A recent study, however, has found that over 90% of people feel unsafe in some way or another with this new technology. We're here at the Myra Test Track in the Midlands to find out more. Business Secretary Vince Cable announced that a £10 million fund will be made available to researchers in the UK to push autonomous vehicle innovation. He also revealed that the current laws around road safety in relation to such vehicles will be reviewed. According to the study by Churchill Car Insurance, only 8% of respondents had no fears about self-driving cars, with over half concerned about malfunctions and a lack of human control. Science Minister Greg Clark believes that people's misgivings about self-driving cars will disappear as more data relating to their potential safety benefits comes out of such facilities as Myra. The truth, most road traffic accidents are caused by human error. So one of the big advantages uh, of driverless technology is that it's safer. Uh, now clearly as it becomes better known and uh, talked about uh, and promoted, people will, uh, will understand that and be able to see the benefits. Perhaps the answer lies in a hybrid type of driverless car whereby the driver can take back control at any moment. We had a go in one such prototype that uses connected, unautomated driving technology developed at Myra. As driver, I've got the unique control to engage this system. All I need to do is press one button on the steering wheel and tell it that I want the car to take this journey for me. After that, it's all really about this tablet computer. So I've told it the route, I've told it which parts of the drive I wanted to automate. I just press this button to initialise it and you can see the steering wheel has come to life of its own accord. What are the safety issues that need to be overcome before this being introduced into public roads? Well I guess the fundamental difference between this car and what you're going to see on public roads is this car is programmed to be fail safe. If there's any uncertainty in any of the computer or sensor systems um, in this car it will choose to give the control back to me as a driver. If we want to use driverless cars with members of the public we really need to achieve what's called fail operational. If something goes wrong in the car, it needs to be seamlessly taken care of, so there'll be uh, multiple sensors and multiple computer systems at work. There have also been concerns that such systems could be vulnerable to hackers. According to Churchill's study, almost one third of those surveyed feared cyber security issues. A core part of our business is actually understanding automotive safety, and there's just a whole general trend in automotive safety, which is that cars are becoming more controlled by electronic systems, and they're becoming more connected. So, in theory, they are more vulnerable to failures and malicious attacks. But the industry is, is adjusting the safety processes so that as technology becomes more advanced, the safety processes also become more advanced. Setting aside the legal and safety issues that still need to be overcome, the question remains, will driverless cars actually catch on? I think the, the interesting thing to note is that it's unlikely that I'm going to go and buy myself a driverless car any time in the next decade. It probably won't be possible either. But you're going to have your own personal car and you're going to be able to choose to automate parts of your journey. Or the car may actually look in some extreme situations to automate the car for safety reasons. But you're still the driver, you're still in control. You choose when you want to use it. Personally, I would use it when I'm stuck in traffic. Vince Cable thinks that it'll be another five to ten years before we see the widespread rollout of driverless cars across the UK. We'll have to wait until then to see if the UK public are willing to embrace them.